Hi everybody, my name is Terry Sproul and I want to welcome you to my studio. I'm excited, it's another Tuesday night and we're right before Halloween, so I'm going to play with Halloween one more time, because I just don't got it out of my system yet. Plus, I came up with a really cool technique today, I'm really excited about showing you. But, before we do that, I have promised Peg Rounds, she is on the design team for Sin City Stamps and she's got a brand new line of stamps out with Sin City Stamps and that is SinCityStamps.com so I'm going to quickly put her on and let her show you her stamps new line and then we'll come back to me and we'll get going I do have Joe in the room to help fi um, with all the questions so if you do have any questions please let me know and put them in caps for us I'm going to turn it over to Peg Hi everybody. I'm glad to be here tonight and thank you Terry for letting me do this. I am so excited to be able to have some stamps with Sin City Stamps and this is my first set and I'm so excited. I spent oh all weekend long I think it was just working with these stamps and creating some fun things and I wanted to share them with you and share a giveaway that I will be doing on my blog as well where you have a chance to win a set of them. This is a Santa, the Santa that is on my set of stamps, and I just decided he needed to have a little different color to him, so I used a maroon ink pad, and I made it into a gift box holder. It just attaches right to a gift box, but the stamp, he is just so cute, and I love all the stamps that I, I did but I have to say he is really becoming one of my favorites quickly and I did an embossed one the other day and I didn't quite finish it so I'm not going to show that tonight so you guys have more coming later on this is the Christmas tree set that I did and it's uh, with the set of stamps it's got several sayings to it and that is one thing that I like having um, with the stamps from Sin City is that you, I, there's several different sayings and greetings that you can put with each of these stamps and they are something that will go right with the stamps um, like this one it has the stars up here and there's a saying on there um, oh holy night perfect to put them together but unfortunately on this little tag I didn't have room to do that and this is one that has greatly become one of my favorites as well this is the bell and there's one of the saying stamps that I created that goes with the set of stamps there. See if we can get that a little bit there. There we go. And I stamped it in gold just for a little bit of gold holiday cheer color to it. But it's even more fun. I've had so much fun creating with these stamps recently that I wanted to share some fun with you. And some lucky winner will be receiving this very set of stamps of their own. Let's see if we can get these to get my camera. I told Terry earlier we have been blowing light bulbs all week long here and I'm down to like two lights in, in this room so we have to get it a little bit better here. There, There's the bell right there you can see that. If you go to my blog which is www.pegscraftingcorner.blogspot.com you and leave a comment on my first post that's up there today and be sure to follow my blog too because I found that's a lot easier um, to be able to get in contact with the winner so if you follow my blog and leave a comment on that post you get to win a chance of winning your very own set of stamps from Sin City Stamps that I have designed so that's it just wanted to quickly share that with you and remember they make great gifts too if you'd like there's a link to the stamps on Sin City site too that you can go purchase ones for gifts too so thanks everybody and have a good evening well thank you Peggy I really I do have to admit I really like the Santa and I'm excited I do own the stamps already so I'm excited to play with them but anyways let me show you what I'm going to show you tonight so we're gonna change cameras real quick get going Okay, let's get in closer here. I am so excited about showing you this technique. Hold on. Let's see if I go the right way. Of course I don't. I never go the right way. Okay, perfect. I want to show you how to make. I made these cool little ghosts. 
So this is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to show you how to make these and then I'm going to set those to the side and we're going to use these because these are actually dry. But I want to show you how I did that. I didn't have a stencil that had ghost on it. So what do I normally do? I find a way to make my own stencil. So that's what I did. I went through my die cuts and I happened to have this die cut from this is Quick Cuts or Lifestyle Crafts and it's this really cool ghost um, die cut. It goes all the way across. Really cute little ghost all the way across. Now because I wanted to make a thicker stencil I did use chipboard but I used kind of cheap chipboard as you see it's a pop top the pop tarts um, box so it's not the real thick stuff because these dies will not go through the real thick stuff so and I don't want you to break your dies so I just found one that was a little thinner and because I wanted it to be a stencil with a hole I didn't want it to fall apart what I did when I sent it through my die cut machine I kinda only cut the center so as you see here it's it's not cut all the way through the end there see what I'm saying and then over here it's not all the way cut through the end so then I can go in with my scissors and pull out the the ghosts and I am going to do cut right here at his arm right there and then I'm gonna cut right at the end of this ghost guy So then I have, and I can use this for something in the future. It's just a chipboard ghost now, but I'm actually after this part. And what I did to make this is I used, and I've been telling you guys I wanted to play with this anyways, so I thought of this idea today. And this is golden, and it's the glass bead gel. Again, it's from Golden, and it's the glass bead gel gel see if we can get that to focus and again you can find these little jars this is the little two ounce jar it's kind of their what they call their sample ones so you don't need to buy the big jar buy the little one it really does last you know it, it you'll get a lot out of this little jar and what I did Terry, I, have a, I have a tip for you Terry go ahead if you take that pop, pop tarts, by the way, I love my pop tarts, but now I can't have them because of type two. But if Me you either. take that pop tart stencil that you created, and you coat both sides and around the edges with PPA, it'll become waterproof. You can use it over and over and over together. It almost turns it into a vinyl stencil. I do it all the time. That is a great idea. I'm not going to do that right now because I. It would take a little while to dry, but let me show you what PPA is. But I mean, it works great to turn a cardboard stencil into a permanent stencil. Oh, hold on here. Of course, it's always over here in the corner while I can't grab. And I keep switching to my, my icon instead of my camera because I have to turn sideways to answer comments, and I don't want everyone to stare at this profile, this nose, this Italian nose. Oh my God! So that's why I keep turning off my cam. There it is. PPA is what he's talking about. That's from U.S. Art Quest. So if, what he was saying is, if you paint both sides of this, let it dry, then the stencil will be waterproof. Great tip. But. Mine's, I'm just going to throw mine away. <laughs> but it's a great tip for future. Thank you, Joe. Now what you do is you take the, um, again, the glass, glass bead gel from Golden. And I like to use my um, spatula. And I always take it, just like you would um, do a cake, I always grab it from the back. You know, I don't do it from the front, from the back. And then just like you would do a icing, you just want to fill the holes in with this uh, gel. Now just a couple other ideas on how to use this gel. You can add acrylic paint to this and add color or you could use splash inks um, from uh, Niji and they could actually add color to it too. Obviously I'm doing ghosts so I wouldn't want color but if you did want color you can make color out of this. 
And I do want to put this on kind of thin, but I also want to make sure I'm filling the uh, the area there. And you, all this leftover can be put back into your jar. Now, just like molding paste, you need to clean your spatula immediately so it does not harden on there. Because once it hardens on there, you're not going to be happy. So I am going to quickly grab a baby wipe, clean mine off. Love my baby wipes, just to get all the extra stuff off there, so that's good. Then you take your stencil, and you would just lift it up. Now you're going to let that dry, and it took, I will admit, um, quite a few hours for it to dry. Now since I didn't have eye, eyes in my little ghost, when, they were, when it was still set up, you know, still wet at this point, I went in and I kind of just made little eyes in the, uh, in the gel. And I did notice that if you let it set up for, I don't know, like 10 minutes and then go in and put your eyes in, I had a little better result than, because here it seems like it's still too wet. See what I'm saying? So let it set up for about five minutes then go in and put your eyes in and then let it dry for I let it dry probably for about five hours seriously before it completely um, then and I oh did I tell you to put it on a craft sheet if I didn't that was a very important thing to tell you <laughs> I apologize if I didn't thank you Peg I didn't thank you Peg <laughs> I didn't think so for some reason so do do this on a craft sheet something that is non-stick because once this dries completely, what I did is I literally just peeled it off. And that's how I got these ghosts. So you see it goes from white to clear when it's dry. So if you did add paint into this, you would get more um, color in your object depending on what you're doing. But since I was after ghost, I was after translucent, so I was happy with that. So again, I would put that to the side and let that dry. So let me put this to the side. So isn't that a cool technique? I was excited about showing you that technique all day. Now, i got a couple other things that are kind of exciting I get to share with you guys. Also with Sin City, <laughs> it must be a Sin City night. Um, they have just came out with, we're going to use that, brand new masks for all of their stamps. Now I'm not going to get majorly into what masks, um, how to use a mask, so I will teach that next week. But their masks will fit their stamps um, directly, and I'm actually going to use that one tonight, that's why I was digging it out. But they've matched their stamps completely. So you could stamp an image down, put this mask on top of it, and stamp other images, lift this up, and your stamped image is now protected. So that's basically how a stamp works. I'm just going to use this one for a moon tonight. So let's get the journal out. And I do want to play with my dilutions tonight again. So... Am I going the right way? Yes. Always got to make sure my book's going the right way. Now, if you guys have not paid with the dilutions, I have had a few um, classes where I did play with the dilutions about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. So if you do want to get a chance on this, I want to go in a little bit there. There we go. So um, watch that class, but I will show you some fun things to do again with them tonight. When you work with your dilutions, you always want to start with a wet, a wet surface. So I just have a regular, um, you know, spray bottle with di um, water in it, and I'm going to start just with a um, the yellow right now because I just want to get some basics on the background. And if you do are interested in ha getting some dilutions. They do have them over at Altered Pages, and I do have a coupon for you tonight, and that is alteredpages.com, and I do have a coupon that I will be giving out in a little while. 
So I want I wanted to get the uh, the yellow on there first. And these do mix and blend really well, but I'm after just one color right now for the idea I have. And I'm just quickly drying it so I can go to the next color. Now do remember when you use spray inks to um, two things I want to remind you. One is always clean off your nib when you're done spraying so that they do not clog up. That's my tip. My second tip is remember your color wheel lessons that we talked about that whenever you use a color directly across from each other remember they're called complementary colors directly across from each other will create brown you will get mud so when you're using your sprays remember when you use colors not to make mud unless you want mud <laughs> I'm not saying you might not want mud but if you don't want mud it would be bad now this was a mask that is for um, Sin City's stamps but I'm actually going to use it for another reason tonight so I'm not actually going to mask a stamp I think I'm going to just I'm just going to use it as a mask an actual mask and not for stamps because now I want to go over with the dilutions again and I'm going to use this time the squeezed orange and my mask is going to work to cover that spot for me. So now I have a beautiful, perfect moon. So even though this is designed for something else, it can be used other ways. And she's going to be selling these masks for really a really good price. And I don't know another company out there right now that has um, stamps and masks that are matching. Right now the only way I know how to do them is the old-fashioned way where we all have to um, you know make our own and I think I've taught you that before where you, I use um, a really thin like uh, post-it note and then I um, that's how I actually would make my own mask but then you have to fussy cut around it and some stamps you just don't want to do it. It's just too much work. So I'm really excited about getting these uh, these uh, masks from Sin City. Now I really liked my uh, graveyard last time, so I got to put another graveyard in. And this time I am going to use the dilutions again. Last week we used paint. So if you don't have dilutions, you could use paint, or you could make your own. If you have um, gelatos, you can cut it a little the gelatos off, put it into a water bottle, add some water, mix it around, and you make your own sprays out of gelatos. So you could definitely do that too. Lots of ways. Now I need an extra piece of paper here. And I'm just protecting a masking off section here for myself. So, because I know I'm going to spray and I know I'm going to have overage. And I don't want that. So, <laughs> so that's how you would, you know, take care of yourself there. Sorry, I'm out of, out of, out of range there. Okay, perfect. I did get a little too much uh, spray there, and that's where I got that bleedage. Bleedage. Is that a good word? Probably not, but that's my word for today. Bleedage. Okay, I'm just wiping off my stencil so I can do my next spray. Because I want to do that again over on this side. So again, just putting some protection in there. Okay, I'm going to try to spray a little less so I don't get the 
bleed under. There's a little better. Okay. Messy hands, but happy hands. Oh, I like you already. Isn't that fun? Just instantly you have a gorgeous thing already. Just so much fun. I love it. I love how this stuff works. Now I'm going to go quickly tap off some of this extra. And I want to use <laughs> that. Isn't that cool? This is um, Andy Skinner uh, uh, stencil. And I know they have them over at um, Altered Pages. So you can get it over at alteredpages.com. Now I thought about my original thought, and now I'm changing my thought. My original thought is I was going to do that ghost technique. Now just to refresh your memory of what that ghost technique was, that's where you go in and you remove the ink from behind. So you could t go in with like a... Uh, a uh, baby wipe also just water will work and basically you're removing the paint that you have below and it'll give you a mask like that okay I like that never mind Terry, keeping it. you have a question out there how do you clean your delicate stencils um I throw them in water <laughs> I, I, I take a um, I, I put my sink I fill my sink up with water and I um, lay, just lay them in there so most of the paint comes off just by the water dissolving it and then I um, if, then if I have to I will go in with a really soft uh, scrub brush not scrub brush but just really softly clean them off but sometimes I don't clean them at all or not at all because I am a little neat because you can see there's still a little paint on this one so I don't kill myself to make them perfect But good question. Hope that helps you. But yeah, I just soak them. Like today I had to, um, my Teflon sheets and I have multiples of them. I like that. Boy, I like that a lot. I have multiples of them. And they all had paint on them really bad. And to do that technique, oh, here's another hint. When you do this technique, make sure your, your um, Teflon sheet is clean because See the green paint it picked up? Let me come in closer there. See right there that green paint? It grabbed the green paint that was on my Teflon sheet and now it's literally inside of my my um, my ghost here. Now that is the back and it's not showing horribly so I probably would still use it but but as a hint don't do that. <laughs> See, I can see it really bad there, so I probably won't use that one now. Glad I made two. So make sure you're, uh, I think they should come out of the, you're coming out of the back of the, uh, something like that. Something like that, I don't know. So anyways, don't do that. Do as I do, do as I say, don't do as I do. How does that go? Something like that. Now this is a uh, Sin City stamp also, but it actually has a, let's see if I can show you. It actually has a, a moon on it, but since I already had the moon, I cut it out. Let me show you. That's the stamp right. Get it going the right way. Right there. It's a, it's a really cool, really nice detailed owl with a moon behind it, but I already have a moon. Planned on making the moon that way, so I just cut him out. And colored him in with make sure you use a permanent ink when you color your um, images in to put onto your pages because if you use something and I'm not picking on Tim but if you use Tim Holtz's um, distressed um, markers they are water-based so when you go to glue these down you'll get a smear so I use Faber-Castell's big um, artist brush pens because all of Fiber Castell's pens are Indian ink. Indian ink, when it is dry, is permanent. It will not smear. So that's a really, really good uh, clue. So, anyways, Fussy cutted him out, colored him in. He's going to go right about there, I think. And I love this stamp too. 
This is another one of Sin City stamps, and it is a um, a balloon, a pumpkin balloon, hot air balloon with a witch in the basket, and then on the top, there's a little there's a little kitty, black cat sitting up there on the top of that. So again, I fussy cut it that out. I colored it in. Sorry, I didn't want to go that far. Colored it in, fussy cut it out. I think it's going to go somewhere over here. And I also cut out, again, because this stamp that she had, love this stamp. So I guess what one of the things that I did this for is I wanted you to see, to use, even though your stamp comes with a tree and a moon, doesn't mean you have to use it all. So I stamped this image. Again, I use Indian, black Indian ink. I stamped the image. I colored it in, and I only cut out the casket because, again, I already have a moon on my page. I only need part of it, but I really like the casket. So I could cut that out, and I can bring the casket in somewhere down here and add it in somehow. See what I'm saying? So think about your stamps. You don't have to use every single piece of them. Okay. Where are we at? I want to put him in. I'm going to use gel medium to glue all these down. But I think I want to do some blood. I like my blood. I've been really getting into this blood thing. So I'm going to do blood again. Because I can. And I'm using the Splash Inks um, Magenta, which is basically their red. And I'm just going to do the... Ooh, that blood dripped really... Right, look how perfectly that landed. Right at his mouth. I couldn't have asked for a better drip. Now this stuff is a little thick, so it doesn't drip... Um, I like the thickness of it because it is thick. I like that, but it does. You do have to be a little more um, forceful with it, I guess is the word, than say um, Tim Holtz's uh, distressed um, paints. You can be really just put a little dab up there and add some water, and it will instantly drip for you. I think I want to put a happy Halloween in there too, so hold on here. Okay, that's looking good. Sometimes I don't really have a page in mind, I just have more of a technique of what I want to teach you, so I do wing it here a lot. I hope you know that. I got some stickers I've been wanting to use also. Trying to use up all my stickers, so I think I want to put. I think I put. Hmm. I want to put this in there. Sorry. Quit yelling at me when I put, go out of scene. I really want to put Halloween in there somewhere. I think it would look good right about here. What do you think? Want to cross the moon? Yeah. So I'm going to use up these stickers. Again, that's one of my goals right now is to get rid of all these stickers I have from when I th thought I was a scrapbooker. <laughs> H-A-L-L-O-W-E-N-E, -L -L -E, right? Yeah. Always got to think about spelling. And spelling upside down. I do have tricks on how to put your letters on completely straight. I probably should teach, but I'm so bad about it. Uh, a qu quick tip is you could actually use like a stencil. And what you do is you actually put your letters on, half on and half off your... You could either use a stencil, which I happen to have in front of me, so that's what I'm using. You could also use... Um, H O L O O W E N. -E. Um, see, I got I got to think how to spell. 
Um, you can also use um, a uh, ruler. Halloween. You could use an edge of a ruler, but whatever you use, you want to make sure it is non that it's your your stick your letters are not going to stick to it. You see what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying there? See how I have them half on and half off, and they won't stick to this. Oh, do I not have two E's? Oh, bummer. I didn't pay attention. I don't have two E's. Hmm. 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 Hold on here. <laughs> Tragic. Tragic. Tragicness. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see if I got some ease on here. Uh, ease, yes. D E. Yes. That's not a E. Where's an E on here? A B C D. That's not an E, that's an O. Oh, their E's are all spunky. They didn't cut their E's out. Okay. Oh well. What am I going to do? I'm going to write it in. So, anyways, you would take your. Um, see how I can line it up now? See that? And then you push down the top of the letters. And then you pull off the bottom here. And now they are lined up perfectly for me. See that? Isn't that a cool technique? So that's um, how you can get your letters to line up perfectly. And I'll figure out two E's here in a little bit. I need to dry this because this is way too wet to work with. Okay, there we go. Really like my face over there. That looks cool. Okay, assuming we're not having any questions or anything, I think I might have lost Joe. I'm not sure. I apologize if you're having a question and I'm missing it. I want you to. You haven't lost me. I don't just go away that easily. I don't disappear anymore. Oh, <laughs> damn! I can't get rid of you that easily. Your uh, nope. face has disappeared on my little computer here, so I'm grabbing some black acrylic paint, and I am going to, I have some foam um, stamps that are bats, so I'm going to use them. And yes, I do have some really cute um, Sin City stamps with bats on them too, but I'm trying to use, that's the other thing I'm trying to do right now. I have two goals in my life. One is to use all of my letter stickers, and two is to use every single stamp I own at least once. And I know that seems sad that I probably should have done that already, but I haven't. So, in our case, no human could live long enough to use every single stamp we have. Well, that's my goal. I really want to because I think it's just tragic that I don't. I have all these stamps that I have not used. I think it's what tragic. What you could do to lessen that burden is just send them to me. This, oh yeah, like you need more. And what I'm doing is just painting these uh, little bats with a brush and some acrylic paint to get those bats on there. Peg is just smiling and smiling. She's waiting for the sound to go out so she can narrate your show again. Remember when we did that? Sportscaster, back and forth. <laughs> that was fun. I had him narrate Peg. You missed it on Saturday. Oh, for you guys who did not, Sunday. For you guys who did not join us on Sunday, for the Graphic 45 class, there are still kits available. We have the video. Yes, we did manage to record it. We have the video available. And inside the kits, it's um, full directions also, so you don't even if 
So if you're a visual person, you can watch the video and do it. Or if you're a, um, a um, what's the other person? What's the other way? Um, what's the word I'm looking for, guys? A person who needs directions, you can also do it that way. So so Jerry, I, I don't know if you noticed, but while you were really focused working on your page, down in her little video window, Peg was twerking. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Drag me in on this one, Joe. <laughs> uh -huh. That's funny. I'm going to grab some gelatos and just come in and get some more darkness around these edges. Because I want it to be more spooky. So I'm going to come in. And this one is the... Uh, Oh, I always remember where are the where are the names grape something, and I can't put my glasses on right now, so that's why I can't read it because I'm blind. So I am going to come in with the uh, gelatos here, and these are oh, if you guys have not played with gelatos yet, I know a lot of you have watched me play with these. These are like crayons on steroids. I swear they just rock. <laughs> And you just can take them. They're basically a watercolor crayon. So you could come in with water and start blending these out also. But that kind of dilutes the color. And I'm not after a dil uh, diluting. I'm, I'm after really intense color. So that's why I'm using my finger. But you can do that. Um, but if you put them on straight like I am here, and you literally just take your finger, and if you don't like to get your fingers dirty, you can use a makeup sponge, or they actually have tools from um, Faber-Castell, which are these are from, that are specially made for blending out gelatos, but I, I like to get my fingers dirty, so I have no problem with it. I do want to come in below these and kind of make it look like there's a shadow below each of these caskets. And these, they roll out like um, chapstick. They kind of remind, their containers kind of, kind of remind me of chapstick. So and I am kind of. For the two E's, could you do that in the blood with <gasps> like a paintbrush and let it run down? Ooh, good idea. Good idea, because I was still stunned on what I was going to do there. <laughs> Thank you for coming up with an idea. I'm like, oh, no. That's what I get for not paying attention. And I thought I looked on there, too. I'm so mad at myself. But I like that idea. Let me try that. Let me finish my caskets here. So basically, you see where I'm going in right below the casket with the dark purple gelato? and putting almost the exact same thing so it looks like it's being shadowed down there. And I'm not making it perfect because if you think about it, if a shadow is not perfect normally, especially in the dark in a you know, spooky. So I'm just kind of getting the general look that a... Um... Now, on the crosses, I am, though, look how I am going in and I'm making a cross down here. See that? But I am blending it out so it does, again, look like a shadow so it's not so intense. But good idea, Peggy. Thank you. We'll do those from the E here in a minute. Let me finish up this. Perfect. Ooh, I likey. Oh, I likey. Okay. I get so excited because it almost looks better on the on the screen sometimes than it does me looking down at it. I like him. He looks really cool over there. Okay. Oh, little paintbrush. Little paintbrush. And I'm going to use the splash inks to do that because of the color. I'm just going to put a little drop down there and I'm going to attempt to color in two E's. Let it drip. We do have a question, Terry. Marilyn wants to know what's the difference between gelatos and neo colors? Neo colors. 
I don't know what neo colors are to be completely honest um, I can explain a little bit more about gelatos and it might help I will do some research about those though gelatos are um, water-based so if you, you get the um, so you can get them wet hmm now I'm really curious I'm gonna go on the internet after this and find out what those are send me an email or um, find me on Facebook and uh, send me that question again so I can do some research I know I've used like oil pastels and they're different because they're oil based um, there is Fiber Castell has another set of, and I don't know what the name of them are right now, I think they call them Pastel Gel Sticks, that are the exact same thing as the Gelatos, and I don't know why they have two different names. I think, this is, I'm guessing completely, I think when Fiber Castell has been out for a really long time, and I think they started a new division, and it's called Memory Crafts, um, Memory Craft, Memory, Memory Design Craft. That's it, Memory Design Craft. And I think that's when they came out with the gelatos in that name, even though they're all fiber castell. Now, but Terry, I have. I, I did find they're made by Karan Dosh, and they're water soluble wax pastels and folks say they're sort of a highly pigmented crayon easier to use than oil pastels I'm guessing they'd be quite similar but I'm having a feeling they're going to be more crayonish and not blend maybe as easy as the fabric yeah the one thing that is about these now I will check into those a little more these are really really creamy like almost like butter for lack of a better word so these blend really easy. Now I have been working with um, um, oil pastels and they don't blend so well. You can't put layer on top of layer on top of layer. So maybe that's a little bit of the difference also. Ooh, I lost my little bit of my color there. That's okay. Uh, okay, back to putting, I'm going to put my owl right there. Now I do got to dry this because I don't want to get this wet. Um, when you use your dilutions, they are you're able to remove them until they are heat set. So make sure you heat set all of your dilutions before you try to put water on top of them. I want to make sure this is good and dry because I want to go in and glue these pieces in and I also want to get my ghost in here somehow I don't want to lose him either though I'm, I'm torn here guys I'm torn maybe the ghosts come out of the ground ooh maybe there could my ghost be having a party down here on the bottom I think my ghosts are having a party down there on the bottom. That's what they're going to do. I solved my problem. Yay. <laughs> okay. I am grabbing. I'm grabbing, grabbing, grabbing my uh, gel medium to glue my pieces down. And I'm also, as I've told you guys a billion times, I am going over the uh, letters with the gel medium also because I want to make sure they stay down permanently and I'm going to try to glue those guys down there on the bottom with the gel medium also so let's start gluing Terry I bet you could even cut up the banner of ghosts and put them coming out behind those tombstones <laughs> and you know even though you made them as one piece you could always cut them up yes so what do you think across the bottom having a party or one at a time coming out Let's do a little bit of both. How about that? Where are my scissors? Where are my scissors? These will work. 
Okay, I'm going to grab that one right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Right there. Okay, let's see how these glue down. I'm going to try to glue them down with the gel medium. You could, just for an FYI, you don't have to test necessarily do this technique on the um, Teflon sheet like I did and peel it off. You could have done this directly on your page. The only problem with doing that is it's going to take a long time to dry. And that's kind of why I did it the way I did. Because I knew that I couldn't work around the ghosts while they were drying. Even if I did them last. So if you wanted to, you could do this directly onto your page without having to... Uh... And Terry, Terry Sue Rosen, or Rosen, sorry Terry if I got it wrong, she just posted on my personal Facebook page a blog post that really compares different materials including Karandash Neo Colors. Oh, so cool. And I just... I shared it with you, but if you look on uh, my personal Facebook page, she just posted a nice blog post comparing them. Thank you, Terry. That's very, very nice. cool. Thank you. I'm just trying to get my ghost cut apart here. Thank you, Terry Sue. Okay. Another one right there. Yeah. So I'm just, just gluing onto the back. Get those glued down. Okay, I do want to go over my letters here. And this, um, this is just a good tip to keep your letters from not coming up. And it does dry clear even though it's coming off here as um, very... Uh, milky. And you don't necessarily have to use goldens. I'm a big golden fan, so I would I always almost always use golden products. They just never do me wrong. So, that's why I use them. But there are other companies that have gel mediums out there, including Fiber Castell. So, you don't you can use whatever gel medium you like. Uh, a lot of times um, Dick Blix has the gel mediums on sale. I think I got mine last time. This package was like 40% off. No, they had a 60% off sale and I got it for a really good price. A lot of times, because I know I use gel medium a lot, I will buy a couple um, containers when they have a really good sell. I like you. Go ahead. Somebody have a question? thought I heard somebody about Rick Talk. Oh. So I like that. And we're about perfect. Okay. Let me give a coupon out because I'm happy with the page. I'm going to give a coupon out for Altered Pages, and that is alteredpages.com. She has given me a coupon for 25% off your order. And that's for anything on her website. If you also, if you order um, with this coupon, you also get a free um, digital um, image. And I'm not sure exactly what that was. I didn't, she literally gave me this coupon like five minutes before I came on, so I didn't have a chance to go check it out. But it is the code to get the 25% off is Terry, T-E-R-R-I, 25, the number 25. And if you use that code over at alteredpages.com, you will get a 25% off your order. Also, I have a winter, a winner, not a winter, it's 
winter here today because it's going to snow tonight. I'm not happy about it. But we have a winner from last night's or from last week's um, group, and that is Danielle Hayes. So thank you, Danielle, for playing along. And if you would like to win, the way you win is that you um, post your pages that are inspired off of mine um, on my group called All Things Terry Sproul, and that's on Facebook. And you have a chance to win a prize, and that's what I do every week. I really don't like the way this looks down here. So I'm going in with my black gelato <laughs> and changing it because I don't like it. I just, just don't like it at all. <laughs> I'm just not happy with it. So anyways, um, I'm going to just darken that up a little more, make it a little more graveyard-ish and fix that. So please play along. Thank you for joining me. Also, we have kits available for the book. Oh, Terry, I can, it. I can show the Christmas version. Let me go get it. Okay, do that. Um, we still have kits available for this. So if you're interested, the kit is $35 plus shipping. You get $32 worth of product in here. Um, there's full directions plus a video on how to make this. Each page, and I'm missing the tag in here, each page, or six pages in here, has um, three pockets, a pocket there on the end. See that? Right there. A pocket right there. And a pocket right here. And you learn how to make this really cool book, including the binding and everything. So as you see here, each of them should have a pocket like that. Um, all six pages, all everything is included, including a the directions on how to make it written and the directions on how to make it via video. So either way. We're also going to have available, and this is over at Crate and Craft, the Christmas version. And I'm going to pop Joe up on the screen so he can show the Christmas version of this. So hold on. Watch Joe. There you go, Joe. You're on. Oh, so there you see the uh, the Christmas book with Graphic 45's Christmas line. It's really, 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 really pretty. Uh, my sister made this one. She put a little sparkle on there, a little bling. So there's some stickles. I don't know if the stickles are showing up. But the papers themselves are just gorgeous. There's lots of embellishments. Again, you have room for plenty of tags. Someone else said, hey, put Christmas recipes in here photos, save Christmas cards from special folks. And, you know, Terry, when I was at CHA, I bought too much stuff. So yes. Besides everything you get to make the book, where you'll have tons left over, you'll be able to make lots of other things. I bought some 12 by 12 Christmas paper for them by accident. So I'm putting three sheets of 12 by 12 paper in with this kit, which you're not, you don't need them at all for the book. So you've got, I don't know, 12 sheets of 8 by 8, 16 sheets of 6 by 6, a full sticker sheet, a banner sheet, three sheets of cardstock, all the album um, front, spine, and back covers cut out of mat board, um, the materials you need to make the little hinges in the center, the chipboard small tags to go in the pockets up and down, large tags to go in the side, and all the fibers and the written instructions. And the book measures uh, six inches tall, by nine inches across the front, by two inches on the spine. So it's a big, it's a big book. This is not a little book. There's six pages. There's a quarter of an inch between each page, so there's plenty of room for stuff to go in the pockets. So you're going to be able to not only make the book, but I know you'll be able to make Christmas cards, tags. That's our cat who's decided to walk right in front of the camera at this moment. So Hi. Let me get rid of the cat. Urgh. She was good till just now. So, I that popped is the Christmas gift. It's oh, there, there, baby. On our site tomorrow. Um, but remember, we said we would email the folks who attended Sunday's class first. There are only six steampunk kits left, and I only have 23 Christmas kits. And the cat has to come back. She's just determined. So, that's the Christmas book of. Same design as Steampunk Spells, just a different paper. The instructions will show the Steampunk Spells paper. Of course, you know it's the same instructions, just different paper. 
just a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Great colors, lots of pockets. Uh, we're going to use this to put recipes. If the cat doesn't eat all the ribbon. No. Okay, I got to mute because I got to go yell at the cat. Okay, thank you, Joe, very much for showing us that. Um, again, it'll be on here in a couple days. I am switching my camera back to me. Back to me. And thank you so much for joining me along. And Danielle, make sure you email me. Oh, sorry about that. We don't want to be that close. There we go. <laughs> you don't want to see me that close. Um, make sure you join um, Danielle that you email me so that you uh, get your prize. And I'll send that off. I like the way my Halloween page turned out. I really like my guy hidden over here. I kind of turned out cool. Happy with that. Thank you again for joining me. Um, remember to check out Peg Stamps. Thank you for um, coming on, Peg. Um, I'll post that link on your um, Terry Sproul Facebook page as well to my blog. Great. So go check out Peg so you get a chance to possibly win that. And go check out Sin City. And remember, altered pages, you get the 25% off with Terry25. Okay? Good night. Bye.